Hey guys, welcome to our UI tutorial for iClone 6. In this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing you to all the new UI with iClone 6. It's quite a bit different from iClone 5, as you can probably already tell. So let's take a look at uh, what's different. Uh, first of all, we have our toolbar on the top here. We no longer have our content categories. This toolbar, you can uh, kind of move stuff around if I want. I can just, you know, grab my Indigo plugin uh, toolbar tab right there, and I can drag that, and I can, you know, increase or decrease the size of each individual toolbar item here by clicking and dragging these handles here as well. Let's go take a look at the content window on the left hand side here as well. So the content window contains all of your content uh, which was previously up here. We have our actors, we have motions, we have the 3D scene, we have our or rather our stage rather, we have the props and we have our media and then we have this folder called package which I'll get to in just a moment. So the first thing first, uh, all of the windows right now in uh, Icon they can be docked and undocked simply by double clicking them. So I'm going to double click the content window and I can undock it. I can move it around. I can dock it over here on top of my modify uh, window as well if I'd like. I can uh, layer it on top as well if I'd like. So there we go. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll leave my content manager uh, over here uh, in a tab over here. And in addition with the uh, content window, you can also search for items as well. We have our new uh, search uh, field right here. So if I go to my uh, characters and I wanted to search for, uh, say, Mason, for example, I'm just going to go to this parent folder, which is actually empty, just full of other folders, and go ahead and search for Mason. And we found Mason right there. And I can find Heidi as well. Um, or I can even find Chuck right there. So there's all sorts of uh, different ways to search for content. If I wanted to go into my props, tab right here I could search for uh, you know trees and I have all of my uh, speed trees right here as well so it's a very useful uh, handy tool just the uh, search function right there in addition if I uh, you know go to my uh, let's see this scene view right here if I press control one I can change the size of the icons in my uh, content window as well um, you know list list view medium view and, and large uh, view right there I normally keep it on the medium view and you can click and drag uh, you know the windows to make them larger smaller as well which is pretty cool. So let's go and take a look at this uh, package tab right now then. So in the package tab, we have the template section right here. And this contains a bunch of folders. All the hot new content that we're promoting in the content store is under this folder. All the new stuff, this is all the newest content that we have released in the content store. If I double click one of these, it'll just load up the product page here in my uh, Google Chrome. And you can see here we have the uh, content right here. So this is a pack from Vertigo Games. It's our, one of our newest content at the moment. I'll just close down the browser for now. And then we have content that I've purchased, but it's not installed yet. So this is uh, content that has uh, been recorded onto my account as purchased, but it has not been uh, installed yet. So we have all kinds of stuff right here. And then we can actually go to the custom tab here, and we can create what's called a virtual folder. So I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to select new folder. I'm going to call this folder stuff. And this is going to be my virtual folder. So here I can throw all kinds of stuff into this stuff folder, uh, regardless of what category it's from. So let's go ahead and find uh, Heidi. And I'm going to right click on Heidi. And we're going to add to virtual folder, add to the stuff. And maybe Heidi needs a motion. We can just find, uh, let's maybe just use a catwalk. There we go. So we have this catwalk eye motion here. I'll right click that, add to virtual folder, add to stuff. And then maybe she's doing a catwalk um, with some props. Maybe she's doing a catwalk in the forest with some trees. Whoops, we'll just select tree there. I'm going to take my Alaska cedar there, add to the virtual folder, and add to stuff. And then I can go back to my package tab here, and we have our stuff folder, which contains all those different items that I just added. So this is a useful little feature. Um, you know, if you just want to keep everything in the same folder, uh, you have a project where you need all the same content. Uh, for example, if I was doing a tutorial, I might want to put all the stuff in here as well. All right, so that's about it for the content manager. Let's take a look now at our different workspaces. So if I go up to window, we have different workspaces here. We have, uh, you can see them all listed here with their hotkeys. You can also save your own layout, your own workspace, and reset back to the default one. Let's take a look by pressing Control-3. This is going to change to my animation view. Where you see we have the timeline. And if I double-click the timeline, I can undock that as well. A couple useful, uh, you know, hotkeys for the timeline. If I hold down the Alt hotkey, and I scroll my mouse button, I can zoom in and out really quickly. That's probably the most useful one right there. Another example is if I'm on, say, frame 1000, and I decide to zoom in and, you know, go back to this frame or whatever, 
Currently I'm on frame 1000, but I'm way over here in the timeline. I can just click current frame and it'll jump over to that frame right there. I can also, you know, go back to frame 100 as well by just typing in the number right here. And so those are a couple of quick and easy hotkeys for your timeline. I recommend, you know, you get used to those. Uh, it saves you a lot of time in the long term. So let's go ahead and press uh, control four then. And now we're in the visual uh, effects mode and we have all of our visual effects, ambient light, our shadows and our tune shader and the post effects and everything like that. Now the post effects, in case you're not aware, are currently now uh, found in our scene section. So if I press control two, go back to my uh, content window here, we have the uh, scene section here, we have all of our effects listed here and that's where they're, that's where you can apply them to your scene. So let's go ahead and press control five now. Now we're in render view and this is kind of our cinematic view rather and this is kind of where you can see your project you can play it and you can you know there's not much animation here except for this little speed tree thing here um, but this is where you can you know test out your final render you can choose the final format and everything like that and then if there's a window you can't find you can just press control six and that'll bring up all the windows and this, you get this very cluttered view with every single window uh, icon has normally you won't want to do this so let's just press control two and go back to normal view so let's take a look at uh, navigation quickly then. So if I have uh, an object selected in my scene, if I select it, you'll see I have this gizmo that pops up. I can go ahead and uh, you know move it around um, by t touching these squares or clicking on these squares and clicking and dragging. Uh, if I use the E hotkey, that'll change me to a rotation gizmo and I can rotate my object around. The R hotkey will be a scale gizmo and I can scale things like that. Very important keys to remember. If I don't want to have my uh, my gizmo on there, I can just press Control Q, and if you recall, we are currently still on the scale gizmo. But if I left click now, I can scale this way. If I right click, I can scale this way. And if I use both mouse keys, I can you know scale all sorts of different ways like that. So if you don't have your gizmo currently active, you can still kind of move stuff around. If I press W for example, and I decide to uh, you know just click like this, I can move it this way right clicking will rotate it and both mouse keys will make it larger but normally you want to keep your gizmo on so I'll just press control Q it gives you a better idea of what exactly you're doing in your scene there as well and to navigate the camera if I press alt and I right click I can uh, you know uh, pan around my scene like this if I hold alt and I left click I can simply dolly uh, back and forth like this if I hold alt and I, I click both mouse keys and click and drag I can zoom in my uh, camera like this if I hold Alt and I hold Alt or so Alt Shift and click both mouse buttons, I can zoom in really fast like that. If I'm in a huge scene, um, and if I you know select this item right here and I you know move my camera way over here, I'm like, where is that thing again? I press the F hotkey, it'll focus right on it, and then I can get back into my uh, you know regular position uh, right here. That's some uh, useful uh, navigation tips right there. Um, if I want to take the, take off this grid, if I think it's an eyesore, I can press Control G take off the grid as well which I normally do and now there's a couple of cool uh, camera hotkeys as well if I have my cube selected here and I press the U hotkey I can toggle between my uh, prop and the current camera properties so in the modify panel here to the right I press the U hotkey it'll uh, go ahead and select my prop press U again and I'll select my camera properties and here I can you know for example if I wanted to zoom in I can just go ahead and activate my depth of field, pick a target, pick this, and you can see we have that nice uh, depth of field in the background. And then I can go ahead and U and go back to my uh, cube properties right here. So that's a very useful hotkey there. We'll just deactivate that depth of field for now. Another useful one is H. Uh, if we press the H hotkey, we can toggle between our preview camera and our last selected camera. So H, 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 H. You can also you know, select it up here and uh, toggle that way as well. That's some quick camera navigation for you. Let's go to our scene tab and take a look at this one now. I'm gonna double click this one just to expand it a little bit. And you can see we have a couple of different uh, conditions here now listed in our scene view. So if I select this uh, you know, hollow cube right here and I decide to uh, zoom in on the uh, hollow cube there, I can make that invisible just by you know, clicking the uh, eye condition there or the uh, visibility condition. I can decide to lock it. Uh, that way I cannot move it or scale it or anything like that. If I you know, press the Q hotkey and I select all the objects around it, I can press the W hotkey and uh, you know, move them all. Everything will move except for that one prop. Press Control Z and undo that for now. 
And then I'm gonna unlock that for now. And we have different render modes as well. So we have normal, smooth, and our wireframe, and our bounding box for physics. Now let's go back to normal for now. And we'll talk about uh, wireframe mode in just a little bit. Um, we also have our shadows here, so let's zoom in a little bit so we can kind of see the shadows a bit more. We have the option to uh, you know cast only shadows, doesn't receive shadows. We have the option to receive only. We have the option for no shadows. And then we have all shadows as well. So we'll just keep it right there for now. We also can assign physics states to our props via this condition section as well. And then we have our real-time smurf, uh, real-time smurf, uh, real-time surface smoothing, not real-time smurf. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the edge here. We can see we have this kind of, um, jagged edge here a little bit. If I press my real-time surface smoothing option there, you can see that kind of really smooth things out. And this is, um, basically modifying the mesh a little bit just to kind of smooth out the corners. So let's take a look at this in wireframe mode. Uh, to get into wireframe mode, you can press control R as a hotkey. And take a look at this now. If we have the surface smoothing on, real-time surface smoothing, you can see the uh, high polygon count. If we take that off, it becomes very simple again. So this is a really interesting thing to uh, have on your props. If you want smooth edges, if we zoom out, take a look at this uh, wireframe. You can see when we zoom out, the polygon count seems to get a little bit smaller. And that's because we have, uh, currently we have level of detail. Um, set to performance, I believe. I'm going to press Control P to go into my preferences here. And in the real time render options, we have a uh, level of detail set to performance. Now, this is if your uh, scene is very, uh, you know, very heavy to render, you can set this to performance. If I have it set at quality and I zoom out, you can see it maintains that high polygon count regardless of how far we zoom out. So that's kind of a cool thing to know about if your scene's getting very heavy, you'll probably want to set your stuff on uh, the performance. If you have uh, real-time surface smoothing, uh, set your level of detail to performance and that should help, uh, you know, speed things up a little bit. So we'll just go ahead and uh, close this down for now and I'm going to toggle the wireframe mode off now. And again here, if I want to, uh, you know, if I, if I have a huge project, there's so much stuff in my project, I can go up here and I can uh, add a filter. So if I only wanted to show the props, I can just select none here. I can select prop. And if I want to show any everything except for the props, I can invert that selection. And now we have everything except for the props. Then we can go back to none or all. So that's a filter just for kind of selecting stuff from your scene. You can also search for it up here in the search field as well. So let's go ahead then and just uh, dock that scene window back onto the left hand side here. Now another cool thing that you can do with uh, iClone 6 is you can drag materials directly onto your channels uh, in the modify panel. So let's maybe select this, uh, you know, hollow cube again. Uh, let's go over here to uh, the material list right here. Uh, by the way, if you want to, uh, you know, scroll between these options here, you can just use your mouse uh, key as well. Um, you can do that on the content manager, the scene manager and everything. You know, if you're too lazy to click it, go ahead and scroll. So let's go ahead. Um, I have a uh, explore window prepared here uh, full of materials. So I'm going to go over to that right here. We have all these textures right here. So you can see we have this uh, hollow cube selected. It's diffuse texture is right there. Now what if I wanted to, uh, you know, click and drag a new material onto that? I can just click and drag this, you know, asphalt right here and drag it directly onto my channel right there, my diffuse channel. And you can see we now have this nice looking, uh, you know, asphalt hollow cube. So that's kind of how you can, you can basically click and drag anything from Explore into iClone now. If you want to uh, select a material, you can just use this uh, picker button right here and also use the B hotkey. We can select, you know, this. Uh, it won't really work for props that only have one material in the first place. So let's go to our content manager and let's uh, let's bring in a Mr. Mason here. I'm going to search for him. I'm too lazy to go through the directories. So we're going to drag in uh, Mr. Mason here. And if we go over to uh, Mason here, we uh, you know, use that picker button right here. You can see we have all sorts of materials that are part of uh, Mason, right down to his tongue and his eyelashes. If I want to pick his shirt, I can use this uh, B hotkey actually, and we'll just select his shirt. Bam, there we go. So we've selected the shirt. We can change the color of his shirt if we want. Diffuse. You know, let's just change that just for fun. We'll just go ahead and uh, change his diffuse color to something like uh, give him a blue shirt. There we go. Now he's stylish. Now on that note as well, if I have uh, you know Mason selected and I'm uh, you know up here, 
or down here, if I press the Y hotkey, that'll automatically take me to this texture settings. And uh, if I press Control minus, that will just minimize everything in the Modify panel. And I can see a few of them have hotkeys right here. Uh, substance materials are M. Uh, we have Control T for tessellation. Uh, texture settings, Y is the most useful one if you just want to skip to it in the Modify panel. Or you can just press Control minus and go back to it like this as well. Now let's take a look at the lighting hotkeys. So previously in iClone 5, if you press the forward hot or the forward slash key, you'd only toggle your uh, main scene light. So now we currently have two lights uh, set up. You can see the directions that they're facing right there. We have that uh, um, key light and the, and the uh, additional directional light right there. If I just uh, scroll around, you can see them. Now if I have my light selected and I press the forward slash key, I can change my main scene light like this. And if I have you know a prop selected and I just decide to do something with that, I can press forward slash and that'll be the same light that I just had selected before. So currently now, if I choose this directional light here and I press forward slash, now I can use that one um, by holding down the forward slash key and just moving around my gizmo like this. And then if I go to a, a prop and I select the prop and I press forward slash, it'll again select the last selected light. So it won't select the scene lights. So this is kind of useful, a very quick uh, hotkey if you know you're refining your lighting and everything like that. And then of course a very important thing to know for uh, any iPhone user is the right click menu. So right click menu is context sensitive. So if I right click on this, uh, Hollow cube here, you can see I have all sorts of different options here. So these are some very uh, commonly used options. So sometimes it's just faster to just to right click your object and, uh, you know, um, choose your command from here. Uh, Mason has the same thing. If we select Mason, you can see we, ha we can have Mason uh, look at something. If I just select look at and I select the uh, cube or the uh, empty cube there, you can see he's now looking down at that uh, cube right there. And then we have, uh, finally, we have different t uh, quality of renders. Uh, we have different render qualities right here. So we're currently we're at high. If, I, if my scene's getting a little heavy, I can go to uh, medium. And that'll show a, a little less detail in my lighting and everything. And I can go from medium to, uh, you know, quick mode. And this is just your very basic shading right here. So you can see the scene is, uh, you know, fairly fast when you're in quick mode. It doesn't have to render a lot. The materials aren't going to look extremely good, but, uh, you know, if you're just you know, focusing on animation or something like that, quick mode is always really useful. Now, one final thing here, if I zoom out of my scene and I just decide to right click uh, somewhere away from my scene, let's deselect Mason there, I'm going to right click, I can choose create, I can create a directional light, a spotlight, a path, or a camera. So these are some very useful, uh, you know, things to have if you just have nothing selected and you right click on your scene, let's make sure nothing is selected first, so just click on the sky, right click, create, directional light, spotlight, or whatever camera. You can also go up here and create, um, you know, some primitive shapes, some surfaces. These are some very uh, useful items that you can add into your scenes. So they're just appearing in the create menu, you know, add lights and add cameras and everything like that. So that's basically it. Um, we'll have a list of hotkeys in the uh, YouTube description below as well. If you want to, you know, focus on your iClone speed, you can check out all the uh, hotkeys and everything like that. Let's just go back into a uh, high quality mode here. And uh, that's one thing that iClone is really uh, well known for is, uh, being, is being quick and uh, easy to learn and uh, intuitive. So uh, I'd recommend, you know, check out your uh, hotkeys and uh, set up your workspace however you'd like uh, with, with iClone 6's new QT interface. Uh, it's, you're able to uh, customize, totally customize your UI according to your own personal workflow. Uh, again, so hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully you learned a lot of hotkeys and uh, stuff that will help you in the future. And thanks for watching.